I like The Rise of Skywalker, and it's an odd thing that it's a divisive thing to say that, but hey, welcome to the world. But in this spoiler talk, can I say one thing up front that we can all agree on? Spoiler in three, two, one. Chewie got his medal! How awesome is it that Chewie finally got a medal? Destiny of a Jedi. Welcome to Durbania, I'm Durbin, and this is my spoiler talk theological analysis for Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker. After seeing this movie a second time, I stand by the grade I gave it in my spoiler free review an A minus. This movie, it, it has issues, it's got some problems, but it doesn't bother me. I find the movie incredibly entertaining. I find it to be a great conclusion to this particular trilogy. And like I said in my spoiler-free review, yeah, Empire Strikes Back, still probably my favorite Star Wars movie. Force Awakens, still probably my favorite of this current trilogy. But The Rise of Skywalker, I think, is a solid movie and has a solid ending for this trilogy. And one of the things that I really like about it, again, is the return of J.J. Abrams. And I, I like his pacing, I like his style, I like this one was more of an adventure. It was just cool to take the cast and to bring them together again. Something that always kind of stinks, like when you have a trilogy like this, is the stuff that you miss in between movies. Like, when did Finn start developing the Force and being Force-sensitive? Because he was clearly very Force-sensitive in this movie. Not to that point where he can move stuff or whatever, but he was be able to sense things and it was kind of cool to see him do that. Finn is an interesting character. I really, it, I liked him in Force Awakens. He kind of annoyed me in The Last Jedi and this movie was a good little mix in between. I feel like Finn's main role is always to run and scream at the top of his lungs, Ray! Like I just always feel like that's his primary role in these movies. No, he had a good role in this movie and it was cool to see him be Force sensitive. I would have liked to have seen that develop more either to see him start to learn that he's force sensitive and trying to figure that out, but that would require that happening in The Last Jedi in a previous movie. I don't know, it just would have been cool to have gotten a little bit more development on that because I thought that it was a cool idea and I would like to have seen that go a little further. And C-3PO, oh my gosh, let's not forget C-3PO. Of this new trilogy, this is like the biggest role C-3PO has had. In fact, probably since the original trilogy, this is the most screen time he's had where he's gotten to be funny and have his humor. And it was cool the way, you know, when his eyes turn red to erase his memory to get past his protocol to not read the Sith language. Like, that was kind of cool. I was wondering why he had the red eyes. I was wondering why they were getting into his memory. And it's because he's programmed not to repeat the Sith language. And he had the dagger in his mind and the dagger got taken. And so they he was the key to finding the Wayfinder to get to the Sith planet Exegol, so there was a lot of stuff about that that was really cool, and it made C-3PO a central figure in that, and for this being the final movie of the Skywalker saga, it was just cool to see C-3PO have a much bigger role. I kind of wish R2 was with him a bit more on that, but we already had BB-8 in that new little droid, but if we got rid of that new little droid and threw in R2-D2, I think I would have been okay with that. It would have been cooler to have C-3PO and R2-D2, but really... I'll take what I can get, and I was just happy to get a lot more C-3PO in this final movie. One of the things that I really liked was just the overall storyline of this movie. Like, J.J. Abrams, he had the pace moving. This movie really moved, and it moved fast, and it hit the ground running from the first sentence of the opening crawl. I mean, how cool was it? The first thing it said in the opening crawl was, The Dead Speak! Whoa. Cool that he had sent a broadcast throughout the galaxy, and it's interesting because it shows us how far Kylo Ren has developed between Last Jedi and this. That his heart has darkened to the point that when Darth Vader's master sends a broadcast, does Kylo go looking for his grandfather's master to learn? No. He goes looking for his grandfather's master to kill him and end a threat to his power. So it was interesting to see how much darker Kylo Ren's heart got. But to me, the whole storyline that this movie was the return of Palpatine, it made so much sense because of how smart and how powerful Palpatine was. I mean, you go back to the prequels and what did he do? He pitted the Republic and the Separatists against each other. He created that galactic civil war, the droid army and the clone army. He just used them as pawns in his sick little game to become the emperor of his 
empire. That's how smart he was. That's how powerful he was. And of course, since he learned from Darth Plagueis and learned... The dark side of the Force is a pathway to many abilities some consider to be unnatural. Of course, he was prepared, should Darth Vader betray him at any point like he did in Return of the Jedi, of course he was prepared, and of course he had things set in motion, because he knew how to use the Force to create life. He knew how to use the Force to even prevent some from dying. So it made perfect sense to me that Palpatine would be returning. But even cooler, that Palpatine really has been the driving force behind this entire trilogy. Snoke was created by Palpatine. You know, as Kylo Ren is walking through that little area on Exegol, and there we have this like vat filled with different Snoke bodies. Palpatine created Snoke and every dark demonic voice that Kylo Ren had been hearing in his head, every lie of the serpent whispered in his ear, it was always Palpatine. And I just found that incredibly deep. So of course, Kylo Ren yields to Palpatine. And that leads us to the next part of this story. Like, you know, I was theorizing that Rey was a clone of Palpatine so that maybe, you know, Palpatine's dark force ghost can inhabit her body. And I was this close. Like, I was almost right. She being the granddaughter of Palpatine, which made that scene so much cooler when the ship was trying to take off and they thought Chewie was in that ship and she uses the force and catches it. I mean, first off, how amazing to see that, to see how powerful she was, that she captured that ship in the force and was pulling it down. But when Kylo showed up, knowing the truth about her and was pushing her because he wanted to see Palpatine's power in her. Plus, he wanted to show her the truth about herself because he knew about their bond, that they were this dyad in the force and that their combined strength together, they could defeat Palpatine. Again, how dark his heart has become over this time. But when she shot that lightning out and blew up that ship, number one, I nearly freaked out because I thought that was the death of Chewie. And I would have been sorely disappointed that that was the death of Chewie. And I'm glad they did not leave us hanging on that for very long. Like, I'm glad that was a short time. And then we saw that Chewie was alive. And then it didn't take her long in the force to feel that Chewie was alive. So I was very glad they didn't camp on that very long but it was still a very tense moment. But the other thing that really stuck with me was her shooting out that force lightning. How incredible was it? She shot force lightning. And then Kylo gives her the reveal that her father is the son of Palpatine and that they abandoned her, not to abandon her, but to protect her and keep her safe from Palpatine because Palpatine wanted her, so he slew her parents. I mean, how... Ugh! Like that was just a great reveal on so many levels because to me, it explains all the way back to The Force Awakens. Something that's bothered a lot of people, why she was so natural in The Force. You have only to look at Palpatine and see the great power that Palpatine has and to know that genetically, I know we're going The Force is beyond genetics, but still there's like a genetic component here that she has inherited that from her grandfather. And so because of that inheritance from her grandfather, of course, she just is natural in the force. And of course, there's just an awful lot of power there. And so I thought that was cool that her being a Palpatine goes backwards to the Force Awakens and it gives us the explanation of why the Force came so naturally to her, why she was able to move in it so naturally. It's because she was just this natural well for the Force to flow through that powerfully. So I thought that was a cool concept. The other thing that was cool was just the lightsaber fights. And now that this is a spoiler talk, I could get into this a little bit more. I loved how in The Last Jedi, they had that connection. They couldn't see where the other one was, but they could see each other and connect. And in The Last Jedi, you saw some water from the waves of Luke's island get on Kylo's glove there. And so you could see that physical matter could be transferred that way. But what was cool was how they took that to the next level in this. But even cooler, they, they took it to the next level in that lightsaber battle where Rey is in Kylo's bedchamber and Kylo is down in the village, but they're connected through that force connection. Their lightsabers are actually making physical contact. And whenever they hit something in the environment, it will spill in the other's environment. Like, I just thought that was cool showing kind of the power of their bond and taking it to that next level. That it was almost beyond force projection. It was the bond, which 
My gosh, their bond was pretty slick, was it not? The fact that they were a dyad in the force, two yet one, and that their bond was this incredible power, that even Palpatine saw that bond and said how rare that bond is. So then rather than letting Rey strike him down, he tried to suck the power out of both of them from their bond to use that power to make him alive. The thing that I thought was even cooler about that is I've been recently binging The Clone Wars on Disney Plus and I'm in I just finished season three but right before seeing this movie I had gone through episodes 15 through 18 which were episodes all about this planet that really is the force. The planet is the force. Use it. And on that planet is this father who has a daughter and a son. The daughter is the light side of the force and the son is the dark side of the force. And Anakin being the chosen one prophesied to bring balance to the force, the father sent out the distress signal to get Anakin to come to that planet. So Ahsoka and Obi-Wan go with him to that planet and the daughter and the son capture Obi-Wan and Ahsoka on orders of the father because he wanted to put Anakin to the test to show Anakin the power that he has through the force. So Anakin used the force that was in that planet, forced the daughter and son to release Obi-Wan and Ahsoka and took it a step further and had the son and daughter bow before him. And so it was really trying to show the raw, powerful force that was available to Anakin as the chosen one to bring balance to the force. And I only bring that up because it was just so cool to go through the Clone Wars and see this brother and sister team that were like that, one was the dark side, one was the light side, they weren't really a team, they were kind of against each other, but then to come into this and have Rey on the light side, Kylo on the dark side, and here they are, this force dyad. So it was awesome to see that in the Clone Wars and then to come and get that cinematically. So that was really cool to go deeper into the force and to explore the force the way that they did. The other thing cool, I had just watched episode seven of The Mandalorian, so brief spoiler for that. The fact that baby Yoda could use the force and impart his life force and heal. Like, that was cool. I got that reveal in The Mandalorian. And then I went and watched The Rise of Skywalker and watched Rey do that. So it was cool to see the healing power of the Force and the way they dug deeper into those sort of things. And for me, it, it was just cool. Cool to get that Mandalorian tie-in. Cool to get that Clone Wars tie-in. It was just cool for me to see all of these similar things. And it's part of what made this feel a lot like Star Wars to me. The other thing that was really cool is when I look at the character of Kylo Ren, he reminds me of Adam and Eve because he didn't start as Kylo Ren. He started as Ben Solo, born of the light side. The way Adam and Eve didn't start as sinners, they were born in the garden. They were born in the light and in perfection, but a serpent came into the garden and they allowed that serpent to talk and they listened to what that serpent said and they fell. And I wish that in this movie we got more of a reveal of when did this serpent start speaking to Ben Solo so that he would fall? When, like what were the words said? What seduced him to the dark side? But either way, he was seduced to the dark side and he fell from grace. And in this movie, like I said, we're seeing just how twisted up he's become on the inside that to the point where it's like, in terms of human means, redeeming him would be an impossibility. But love restores. That fight scene when they're fighting in the old Death Star. And Kylo Ren is basically winning that fight. Leia knew what she needed to do to reach out to her son. She sacrificed her life and did what Luke Skywalker did, right? And projected herself over there to him. And she didn't need to say anything to him. It was like in that moment when he was about to defeat Rey and she projected herself over there, it was as if she sent her love to him. And even earlier in that scene, he said he can't go back to his mother, that it's too late for him. So even though he couldn't go back, she came to him where he was and extended her love to him. And then Ray stabs him. And then when she feels that Leia is dead and she just felt this compassion and she healed the fatal wound that she'd inflicted on Kylo. And so as he's feeling that unconditional love from all those ends, I loved Han Solo. It's interesting because I know he said, you're a memory. It's a memory. And he didn't have that force ghost aura around him. But when I'm watching it, I can't help but think, it's just a little bit more than a memory because of the wisdom and the wise words that were said. Plus the total reverse where, where Kylo says, Dad, and he says, I know. 
to bring that line back and the way they did it, it was just amazing. But what this pictures to me is how love was pursuing Kylo. Love never gave up on him and was pursuing him. Love restores. And that's what God's love is for us. We might think we're beyond redemption. We might think we're too far gone and we can't go back. And yet Jesus comes to us where we are. It says that Jesus died for us while we were still sinners. In other words, while we were still at our worst, he came to us and he died for us. The way Leah came and gave her life for her son so that he would know he's loved. Jesus gave his life for us to redeem us. That it might be humanly impossible, but with God, nothing is impossible. Redemption is never beyond his grasp and his love pursues us. And I love how much deeper that goes with Ray because once she realizes that she's a Palpatine, she's terrified of herself. She's terrified of these visions she's had about her and Ben sitting on the throne of the Sith. These things are terrifying her that she would go to the dark side into such a dark place. And after that fight with Ben, she takes Kylo's ship to Luke's island in fear, destroys that ship, and then tries to toss the lightsaber. And then the force ghost of Luke Skywalker yes, shows up, catches that lightsaber. You know what I love about that? The complete reverse of The Last Jedi, where he got the lightsaber and we had to have that whole subverting thing and he tosses it over his shoulder. But this time he caught it and gave it to Rey and lifted her up. The Bible says perfect love chases out fear. God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. So here he is trying to lift her up and cast out that fear. See, here we get that important lesson. Jedis feel things. And the prequels, they're trying to suppress their feelings, but that's the wrong way to go. Just because you feel afraid doesn't mean you have to be afraid. It's okay to feel it. We have feelings. But the important thing is, what are we going to yield to? Are we going to yield to our faith? Or are we going to yield to our fear? And that's what Luke ended up teaching her in that moment. I was on this island because I was afraid and fear kept me here. Yes, failure, most of all. The greatest teacher failure is. The destiny of a Jedi is to confront fear. So she might feel afraid, but she doesn't have to be afraid. And she could step out in love and confront it. And so this whole idea of love just gets so much deeper because Palpatine's whole thing is based on hate. Jesus said, with faith, we can move mountains. But if we stand praying and have anything against anyone, we need to forgive them so our Father in Heaven will forgive us. It's a powerful verse that we need to forgive because unforgiveness and hatred and bitterness is a prison. So here's Palpatine using the fact that Ray hates him because he killed her parents. He's using that to try to get her to strike him down in hate because as long as she kills him out of hate, he owns her. And so he's trying to tempt her. He's showing her just like in Return of the Jedi. You watch this. This is what made it so predictable. It was so Return of the Jedi-esque. In the same way that you watch The Force Awakens and there were so many A New Hope things, you watch the end of this movie and it was definitely a lot of it Return of the Jedi on repeat. Break me down with all of your hatred and your journey towards the dark side will be complete. Even so, that didn't really bother me. I thought it was really well done. And one of the things that I liked that kind of upped the stakes for me was the fact that you had all those Sith, was it ghosts, zombies? I don't know, that whole stadium of dark hooded Sith creatures and that crazy morbid chant. And if she strikes him down in hate, all the Sith are present in him. And when his spirit passes to her, then all the Sith would be present in her and she would sit on the Sith throne like the Sith Lord, Empress of this new empire as the final order gets unleashed. So yes, even though it had strong similarities, like he opened up the ceiling so she could see the battle and see her friends dying, just how Luke saw the battle and saw his friends dying. So it had all those strong similarities where he was playing the same tricks. That's what the devil does. The devil is not unique or original. He keeps on using the same tricks and the same lies. The same type of temptations he used in the garden, he tried to use with Jesus when Jesus was in the wilderness. And those are the same type of temptations he constantly throws at us now. What was really cool about it is 
after he threw Ben down that pit, which, number one, Ben taking on the Knights of Ren was pretty cool. I wish we saw a little more of the Knights of Ren in action. It was just cool that we got them in this movie, but I think it would have been cool to see more of them in action. But it was a really cool final fight to watch Ben fight those Knights of Ren. To see Rey take that lightsaber, put it behind her back, and use the new force power. Oh, look at that, it's gone. And Ben has it and fights them. That is awesome. You know, to see Emperor Palpatine realize their bond is like this force dyad, and if he could take the life from that bond, then he doesn't need to possess Rey's body. The Sith could just be present in him. There were a lot of cool moments, but when he threw Ben down that pit. The film is called The Rise of Skywalker. I knew Ben was going to rise out of that pit. But what was really cool about that whole thing is when Rey was down and she was saying, be with me, be with me, she couldn't get up in her own strength, not in her own power, not at all. But how cool was it that we heard the voice of young Obi-Wan? We heard the voice of Qui-Gon Jinn. We heard the voice of that young Anakin Skywalker from the prequels, Hayden Christensen. We heard the voice of Yoda. We hear the voice of Luke. We hear the voice of Mace Windu. Come on, Samuel L. Jackson, to hear all the Jedi and that all the Jedi are present in her. I think back to the verse that says, greater is he who is in me than he who is in the world. And when she doesn't rise up in her own strength, but she rises up in the force, releasing hate, releasing unforgiveness, she released the claim that the Emperor had on her heart and she was able to defeat him utterly. And I just thought that was amazing. And then to see Ben come out of that pit and transfer his life force to her and heal her and bring Rey back from the dead, them kissing, I don't know. There was a part of it that's like, because their bond was, it shows you how great their bond was. So to have that moment of them kissing, like, yeah, it makes sense. But at the same time, I didn't care. So like, I didn't feel like that love connection, but it was just kind of cool to kind of see that be the end of it where he was so redeemed and so made new that he laid his life down for hers. And then his body vanished and Leia's body vanished. Like they entered into eternity together. I thought that was kind of a touching tribute to say goodbye to Princess Leia that her sacrifice was a great sacrifice of love. And while we're on Leia, how cool was it that she was such a central figure? Like, I didn't know what they were going to do. Yeah, she's in the trailer, but I didn't think she was going to be such a central figure. But she was central to everything, including being Rey's master. Then they did that really cool flashback to show her training under Luke that she really did have some serious Jedi training. I thought that was really cool to get that background and she quit because she saw the future that at the end of her path, her son turned to the dark side. So she quit her Jedi training, laid down her lightsaber and pretty much prophesied that somebody would take it back up and finish the path she started walking down. But it was cool to see how they did it. Yeah, there's a couple places where you can kind of see the trickery, where you kind of just tell, yeah, I know she's not there and they definitely cut around this or that. But as a whole, it was fantastic how she was able to interact with the characters and be such a major central figure to the plot. And what an amazing way to send her character off that her death was a sacrifice of love and her sacrifice of love actually saved her son and pretty much saved the galaxy from the First Order and the Final Order. And one of the last things that I think is just so cool is how important the names were. That Han Solo said to Kylo Ren, no, Kylo Ren is dead. Ben Solo is alive. It's that idea of being born again, that in Christ we are a brand new creation. The old has passed away and the new has come. Kylo Ren died in this and Ben Solo lived. And then Rey was a Palpatine, but she took the name Skywalker, adopted into that family, receiving the inheritance of that family instead of the inheritance of her grandfather Palpatine, the way God has given us his spirit of adoption. The Force will be with you. Always. Man, there is so much other stuff to dig into with this that whatever I missed, let's dig into that in the comments. What did you like about The Rise of Skywalker? Or if you didn't like it, let's have a nice, non-divisive conversation about that in the comments. Did you like The Rise of Skywalker? I really enjoyed it for all the reasons that I listed. There were some things that were kind of negatives to me, like how did Maz get Luke's lightsaber? I was so hoping we were gonna get that explanation and we never ever did. Why did we spend like two or three times with 
Finn saying he had something important to say to Rey, and then that never happened. Even though it was going to be probably him pledging his undying love and whatever, but the point is, like, why, why didn't we ever go back to that? I'm kind of glad we didn't have him pledge his undying love to her. But it's like, come on, you, you built that up and you don't go back to it. I heard my friend Sean Chandler say that there were like two movies in this one. I think I kind of agree. And what a cool trilogy it would have been to kind of split this one in half and you could take more time on certain ideas and stuff. But as a whole, I loved the pacing of this movie. I thought it was a great story returning Palpatine. I feel like there was a lot of biblical truth in there that you could uncover and find. And so as a whole, I'm giving it an A minus. I really enjoyed The Rise of Skywalker. What did you think? Let's talk in the comments. And while you're there, hit the subscribe button to become a Durbanian. Hit the bell by the subscribe button so you're notified the next time I do a movie review, ranking video, theological analysis, or anything else I do here. I'm Durbin. Thanks for checking out Durbanian.